Hey, beautiful people, photo chat here. I am at Secret Lake Park in Castleberry, Florida, and it's a beautiful evening. Check this out. Just gorgeous, right? So, anyways, I'm here at Secret Lake Park, and I want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart watches i actually happen to be wearing a tag heuer i think it's pronounced kirium k-r-k-i-r-i-u-m and i'm a big fan of heuers but with that being said watches and my experience so far building a watch collection so i've always really liked watches ever since i was a teen 14 or 15, I remember going to the mall and um, I would see in the cases just, I didn't know what brands they were at the time, but I liked them and they were Seikos and Citizens. And I remember, gosh, it must've been my sophomore year, my mother offered to buy me a watch for my birthday. It was a Seiko and I still have it to this day. It doesn't work, but I still have it, right? For the memories. And Along the way, I kept telling myself, man, I gotta go back and start collecting watches. And last year I found myself in a position where, yeah, you know what, I'm doing pretty all right financially speaking and I could start building a watch collection. And so I told myself, all right, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna ease my way into it. I'm not gonna start out with a bang, right? And so, I went shopping online on Mercari just because I shopped there before and I really liked the platform. And so the watch that I ended up buying at the time was an Omega Seamaster. I have it right here. And well, me being new to the whole experience of wash collecting, I should have known, but I didn't. It ended up being a replica. Now, the first sign that this was a replica was the price. 346 trash tokens, best dollars. And I know where you're thinking, photo chat, how did you not know that this was a replica? No, man. Well, no, a couple no, issues. No. <laughs> so the first issue being the seller has 183 completed sales. So they sold a lot of items. The second issue being that they have five out of five stars, just perfect ratings. And so um, I figured you want to buy for someone who's done this before, why will they sell a bad watch, right? It is what it is. The third issue is that the watch was authenticated. And this is important because Mercari has this feature um, where they authenticate items using third-party authenticators to convey that the item is in fact legitimate, it's authentic. And so I said, you know what, for the price, the fact that he's selling it at the price as a lot of people who have the watch in their carts, it's a watch that I like and I could see myself wearing it. I told myself, you know what, I have nothing to lose, so I'm going to buy it. Sounds really blasting up my face. So I bought the watch and I regret it immediately when I got it because I held it and I knew something was wrong. And mind you, this is the first time that I'm holding a watch that from Omega A and B, the only other watch I've ever really had was a Seiko back from when I was a teen. And I could tell you beautiful people, the moment I got the watch, I knew something was wrong. The movement, the time was off, the case just looks like it was screwed on funny. And I don't know the entire history of Omega, but I know that they don't make shit like that, right? And so, I, hey Walter, hey Hansel Pants. So I went ahead and I sent the watch off to get authenticated, came back two days later, it's not legitimate. My heart sank. Um, I'm very disappointed that my first experience buying a watch, it ends up being a watch replica. 
fake counterfeit. And so thankfully Mercari made it right, a bit of a hassle, but they made it right, got my refund, but I'll sell out the $100 for authenticating the watch. It left a bitter taste in my mouth, but I was not defeated because I was determined to still build a watch collection. Where I fucked up is that I didn't do my research and the second watch I bought was another replica. And this one really just, oh, just rubbed me the wrong way in more ways than one, right? So the second watch that I bought that I thought was legit and I have it here, Tudor Black Bay 58. And same exact situation as the first time, except I bought this from offer up the seller had a lot of sales a lot of good ratings and they were selling at a price that was too good to be true and the funny thing is i should have known it from the moment i bought it 400 trash tokens 400 trash tokens for this who the hell sells a tutor black bay 58 for 400 trash tokens no one um i don't know how much they re retail for nowadays but that's like 90 percent off the price right <laughs> now i've always been gullible always been very trusting the individual who i bought it from an offer up again lots of sales just a lot of ratings and they said hey look i got this as a gift but it doesn't work and he took a he took a lot of pictures of the watch right he described it very well he said it has some marketing so i'm, I'm thinking to myself all right this guy is going out of his way to sell a watch that he doesn't want and he must not want it at all, right? So he probably wants someone to have the watch. Well, I bought it and I got it, what, four or five days later? And it feels legit, it looks legit, and everything about it, if you were to see it from far, you would think, yeah, this is a Black Bay 58. The problem is, and this is kind of funny, the very next day after I adjusted the time, I was off by like eight hours. Like eight hours, how does that happen? And this is an automatic, which means, correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm so watch new, but it's powered by movement, right? I move, move my wrist and it rounds or winds it up. And that is how it gets its power. If I'm not wearing this for 15 minutes, it dies. <laughs> Like what? All right, so I lost another 400 trash tokens on a watch that looks really good, but again, same deal is a watch replica. It's a nice one, but man, I was I was pretty pissed off at this point. Second watch replica. The third one, and three strikes you're out, right? I I really took the L on this one because it happens to be. The Rolex Pepsi. I think that's what it's called, a Pepsi. You see that? And I took the O on this, something fierce, because I paid a, a good amount, a few thousand trash tokens. Same exact situation, all right? Except this time I questioned the seller. Um, I wasn't able to meet the individual in person because he lived in what? California. I'll be there in a second. Walter. He lived in California, which should have been the very first red flag, but um, lots of pictures. He was happy to uh, send me details and lots of sales, man. Lots of ratings. And here's the funny thing, beautiful people. I've always, and I think most people, when they start a watch collection, want a Rolex. And I happen to really like the Pepsi one, right? The, the thing is, man, the only reason why I found out was rep, not because it doesn't keep good time, not because it doesn't feel legit, not because um, the movement is off or anything, it ticks all those boxes. It's because when I had my macro lens at the time, the RF100, I was taking some pictures, right? I was gonna brag, show off to some of my friends, hey, look, I made it in the watch world, I got a Rolex. When I noticed that the date the numerals, oh, beautiful people. I was devastated. I knew then and there it was a replica because they looked like shit. 
they look like a kid painted numerals. You, you can't see it unless you roll it close, but the one is not a straight one. There's like choppiness and um, the eight is just, it's not perfect circles. And I was, uh, I can't remember what I was thinking at the time, but I was very, I wasn't thinking, I guess because I lost a lot of money buying a watch that I really wanted and it was an emotional purchase. And yeah, I told myself, I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. So help me God. So, replica, it looks like one from far. It feels like one. If you were to show this to somebody who's always wanted a Rolex, but they never held one, they don't know anything about Rolex, they're still gonna think it's legit, but it's not, right? It's a replica. And the fact that I paid the amount of money that I did just um, learned some very valuable lessons. So those were the three that I bought that ended up being replicas. I had three more that I intentionally bought. Thankfully, I didn't spend a lot of money and that's what I wanna talk about next. So the two here happen to be APs. The first one's a Royal Oak and the second one is a Royal Oak Offshore. And this is kind of funny. Offer up again, but I got these two. I'll show the Royal Oak first. Okay. I got this and this one and a bunch of other watches for 200 trash tokens. It was a watch collection um, from a lady. I wasn't sure if she got divorced or if she was upset at her boyfriend or something, but she said, hey, I don't want these we message and she said it's just she's not with the guy anymore so she selling his watch collection he left it behind and it had these two right and i was like all right you know what i'm gonna buy it um i've always liked ap's part of the holy trinity and i mean from far it looks good if you ask me the band right i've never held one before or anything there's the dial the back I'm trying to show it as best as I can, right? Um, so I got in, and I was like, man, this feels heavy. It looks good. Again, I've never held an AP before, but I've seen enough videos to know, um, yeah, this, this comes pretty close to fooling a lot of people if they're not a watch aficionado. But they're replicas in a new land of bands. The same goes for um, this one here, the Offshore. Big bulky watch. See, I'm trying to put it there so you can see it. And apologies, I should have done this in advance for the other ones. I'll do this in a second, but it feels good. It looks good and it's heavy. Um, real fast, let me do that with the Black Bay 58. I didn't realize the uh, pocket would get that close to it, you see? The band. Even the, uh, I think they call this a crown here, see? So, yeah, those were the two APs. Um, part of a watch collection, they sit there, right? But it gives me an idea of what to expect if I were to actually truly shop for one. The second to last one here, and I just saw it. Aha, I actually made a separate video just for this bad boy. The Santos de Cartier, right here. This is the shittiest replica I've ever seen. Just shitty. And um, bought on offer up, 250 trash tokens, whatever. I got it and the band fell apart like an hour later. It was like photo bowl, just wasn't good. I tossed the band, I just kept the head. You see, there's the head again. And here is the back. Here is, I think again, the crown. But all that being said, this, um, if I were to buy some watches, really drop the money on them, the first would probably be a JLC Reverso or Santos de Cartier. But let me tell you, if this replica feels like an actual Santos de Cartier, which if that would be like a nightmare scenario, I want nothing to do with it because this is a terrible, just a terrible replica. Um, the hands look good, the dials look good, but it's just, it, it doesn't feel good, right? Last one, and then I'll wrap it up, is 
another AP. Now, the guy said this is what you would call a super clone. It's an offshore. And it goes right there. Now, <laughs> it's been my experience with the rest, but the band broke. But look at the back. I'm trying to see. Like that, back, that back looks really good. The funny thing with this is that I dropped it on accident, so it doesn't move. But I just don't feel right taking a watch replica for repair and saying, hey, repair this for me, and then wearing it in town, acting like, oh yeah, I actually have a real legitimate offshore. Because at that point, I'm being a poser, A, and B, um, disingenuous, right? But yeah, this is what you would call a super clone. And again, it's just, it's meant to feel and look like the real deal. I mean, all the details, the jewels, the finishing. So, yeah, if you were to put this on and wear it out and about, you could fool a lot of people, right? Which is what replicas meant to do. All that being said, <laughs> this has been my experience with these sand replicas. Now, um, it's not my intention to go out and buy more replicas unless it's something that I need to see for myself. Okay, just how good of a replica is this? Um, there's a lot of issues with replicas. If you're trying to buy a real deal and you end up with a replica, well, you got got. All right, that's the first issue. Second issue is that depending on where you're at, it's illegal. I'm not much of a law guy. I'm actually a law school dropout. Hence, I'm not much of a law guy. But depending on where you're at, it's a big no-no. So be mindful of that. Um, the third issue is that, I mentioned this earlier on, it feels disingenuous to wear one and act like, yeah, it's, I, I mean business with this, it's a real deal. Just, I've never been a fan of fake it till you make it, right? And that it feels like you're doing the same thing. Um, taking it a step further, that's actually the worst advice I've ever heard. Fake it till you make it, it's just bullshit disingenuous i'm gonna rant real fast don't do that do not do that you're doing yourself a royal disservice you have to believe it until you become it all right i'm gonna stop there so wearing a wrap and acting like hey yeah look check out my rolex don't don't do that all right now i will say the only legitimate reason that i could think of at this point in time for a watch replica is if you actually happen to have let's say attack or carry on me somehow find a replica or taking it a step further let's say you have a vacheron constantine right one of the holy grails and you don't want to wear that bad boy out in public for whatever reason you don't feel safe um you're going to a fancy event and afterwards you're going to go for a stroll out in town i believe that's one of the that's the only legitimate reason to have a watch replica is, hey, I'm afraid it might get robbed. And I gotta be honest, I, it's hard to argue with that. Why would I risk wearing, I don't know, a $25,000, $30,000 watch when I can wear one that's 1,500, 2,000 bucks, and God forbid if I do get robbed, I lose that instead, right? So that is the only circumstance that I could think of where, yeah, I. I'm gonna to wanna to buy a replica legitimately. Um, yeah, but beautiful people, the sun's going down. Just wanna share my experience with watch replicas and how I ended up with these. Lessons learned. Uh, first and foremost, if you're shopping for a watch, please, please, please go to a trusted seller, an AD, all right? Um, an authenticated dealer. So, <laughs> So um, this is an individual who, um, I lost my train of thought. Basically, you wanna buy from someone reputable, someone who's been doing it for many years. And the problem with these online profiles is they could be verified, they could be authenticated, they could have a lot of sales. You don't know, and this is what it ultimately boils down to, if these are legitimate sales. Now, I'm hard pressed to believe that you have 100, even 200 people who are buying your items that end up being bots or fake accounts. But there's something to be said for when you buy a watch and it ends up not being legitimate, the person makes no mention of it, and you wonder, well, how did they end up with all these 
positive ratings, right? So if you're going to buy a watch online from a platform like eBay or Mercari or OfferUp, you really have to do your due diligence. It's good that they have five stars. It's good that they have a lot of ratings. It's good that they have a lot of pictures and uh, they're very descriptive, they're communicative, but that's one of many things that you have to be mindful of. So trust but verify if they meet that criteria, right? The second thing is, and these are our obvious red flags, they're not authenticated, no sales, they're a new account within the last year or so, no profile picture, and they happen to be selling the item at a price that's too good to be true, run, bullshit. The third sign is, and I've learned this the hard way, both with watches and camera gear, but too good to be true usually means it's less than 70% of the full retail price. So, easy example, if something's a thousand dollars, let's say you're buying, I don't know, Christopher Ward for a thousand bucks, or rather you're buying a Christopher Ward, you know the full retail price is a thousand bucks, online you see it for less than 700, something's up, okay, some red flags should go up. It's damaged. Uh, there's an issue with it um, that the seller isn't letting you know about, or it's a rep. I don't know of any Christopher Ward reps, but just an example. And the last thing, and I've seen this a lot too with OfferUp, I'm sorry, with Mercari, um, don't believe for a second that just because something says it's authenticated, it is. The wash that I bought ended up being BS. Um, third party reviewer said it was legitimate and it turned out to not be legitimate. So, um, you're on eBay or whatever platform that has some sort of authentication feature, be very cautious of that because in my experience, that just turned out to be BS. So beautiful people, I, ho I hope um, that my experience with my watch collection journey was insightful, you learn a thing or two, and yeah, I'm gonna keep collecting watches, real watches, and we'll go from there, but I'll catch you all around. Ciao.